Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Michael Brown, and this is Three Words. Today, I'm with Ben Vollmer, a barista, a executive leader of Flatlands Coffee, an entrepreneur, a 30-year-old who has made some crazy decisions in his life and is achieving tremendous success. Today, we're going to talk about why quitting is okay. We're going to learn from Ben that sometimes we just need to say no. Other times, we need to say enough. Other times, we need to say it's time to pivot, change, move on. We learned so much today from Ben. I hope you enjoy this episode. Ben Vollmer, my friend, it is good to have you here in the podcast studio for the first time ever. Ben Vollmer, 30 years old, entrepreneur, executive leader of Flatlands Coffee, just learned off camera, one of the top baristas in the country um, in the past couple of years. So it's exciting. I love my coffee, my friend, and I love my Flatlands Coffee. So This is not an episode sponsored by Flatlands Coffee, but it's great to have you here in the room. And so I'm excited to engage in a conversation with you that is a little bit counterintuitive for me in my role as a life coach. Uh, Obviously, you're a new DMBA life coach. We talk a lot about the power of choices and tenacity and perseverance and doing hard things. But today, our three words are quitting is okay. Quitting is is okay. It's interesting that these are the three words that you've selected for today that most interested you because I spend a lot of my life and a lot of my energy helping people to not quit stuff. That it's my thought that most human beings, the reason they don't achieve their goals in life is because most of us quit most of what we start. And if we just kept going a little longer and had some tenacity and had some perseverance and kept making positive choices as they stack up, on top of each other, we begin to change and we begin to evolve and we begin to achieve those goals. And yet today, provocative, right? Three words, quitting is okay. Why is this struck a chord with you? Talk to us. Absolutely. And based upon what you're saying, it's very fitting with what I have experienced as well. Someone has told to you, Michael, at one point in time, you know, never quit, just buckle down, plow through, never give up, right? Maybe you're familiar with the phrase, winners never quit Mm. and quitters never win. Mm. I would argue that there's a time for that and those can be helpful, but they can also be dangerous and detrimental to us when those phrases are spoken Mm. to us when we should know when to quit. Meaning we're actually doing something that we shouldn't be doing. Exactly. I mean, oftentimes even people who hire me or other coaches on our team, kind of midlife, 40, 50 years old, you know, they will say, I've climbed the ladder of success Mm -hmm. only to realize that the ladder was leaned up against the wrong wall. And here they are at 50 or 55 or 60 saying, "Uh, I should have quit this thing a while back, or I should have pivoted at a different point in my life. I'm guessing that's what you're saying. Absolutely. And for me, I think the reason that this topic stood out as well that I pitched as a three words of quitting is okay is because of my personal background as well. So initially I grew up knowing my parents were not going to help with my college tuition. And I knew this. So I buckled down, I got to work and I kept pursuing the best grades I possibly could get in high school until I got great grades, applied to every scholarship under the sun, got lots of rejections, but just kept going until I got as many scholarships as possible until I was able to actually have my full tuition covered. Wow. And I got to go to the college of my choice, studying the subjects I love of business and entrepreneurship, got a 4.0 GPA, completed three full years of college. And as most would unexpect at that point, I dropped out. (laughs) And I'm not saying, you know, to drop out of college. I'm not here to proclaim that message. Of course not, but still. Uh, That is my personal story. And and I think it was very unexpected for someone like me to drop out. And I was doing extracurriculars and doing competitions in the Mm. college and doing well with all of this stuff. But then all of that to, to drop out in the end. And that's just my story. One person that I, I like the wording of Adam Grant eloquently put, you need to know when to grit and when to quit. Great phrase. I love 
the word comparison. Well, and again, I love grit. We talk a lot about grit in Three Words Podcast, and I even have an acrostic <laughs> for grit. I don't know if you knew this, but no, I didn't. Uh, gumption, resolve, <laughs> intentionality, and tenacity, mm. because I want this kind of like robust energy, this push through kind of attitude, this like, we'll go for it. Um, but what you described, it sounds fascinating. And, and, I'm guessing at 30 years old and being one of the top baristas in the country and, and having your own business and owning your own company and, and now a family, you probably feel like it was a great decision. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it was a great decision. And I'm not saying that I couldn't have done maybe all those things hmm. simultaneously, right? Uh, because I do believe I'm in control of my own life and my actions can accumulate to where I'm wanting to get, knowing where I want to go, right? So, Talking about this subject, there is one person that has some great contact that uh, content that I thought would be really helpful to kind of break down what this means. Like, yeah. when is it a good time to quit, and when isn't a good time? When should and when shouldn't we? Right? This is the kind of realm we're talking about. So, in my research to kind of like get some additional thoughts and input on this as well, I found Carol Dweck, who is a Stanford professor who wrote a book on mindset. And in there, there's two different mindsets. One mindset that I want to talk about first is called a fixed mindset. It's where you believe I have been doing this thing this whole time and I'm stuck in this habit. This is who I am. I'm not going to deviate. And if something comes that's adversity or constructive criticism, I can't change because this is just the way I am. That is the fixed mindset. So it's mostly pertaining to habits, potentially. Okay. And our brains look for these habits. So like, we want habits. That's why I drove here and forget exactly how I even got here, because I, I knew where this studio was. Right? Yeah. I was able to do it blindly. That's why we drive to work and forget how we got there. Or you talk to a business and try to say, this didn't work out, this wasn't working out, and they say, well, this is the way we've always done it. The way we've always done it. <laughs> Worst last words. Yeah. It also, in this fixed mindset, can describe identities that we put on ourselves too. Mm. These identities come from, I would boil down to two things, right? So society. Society tells us to get good grades in high school so you can go to college, so that you can climb the corporate ladder and get a 401k and get that picket fence. Ooh, the picket fence. I knew it was coming. It's exactly the description <laughs> right? we see culturally, right? Exactly. And we're taught this. And so we're just saying, oh, okay. And we go about and we just fulfill the path that we should be doing as yeah. was told to us. The but we identity. didn't put that on ourselves. Yeah. It can be something that we put on ourselves too, though. Hmm. It can be, I want to start Flatlands Coffee. And this is who I am. I am a barista. I am Flatlands Coffee. That's still boxing myself in. What if I'm not thinking about providing the most value to myself, to my family, to society? What if I also wear DMP coach? I wanted to jump on real quick and just say thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you're enjoying it. If you would like to support this podcast, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or share it with a friend. You know, are you going to need to quit something to actually take on that new piece? I am. Yeah. Right now I'm, I'm working my way out of mm. flatlands, which was a really hard transition for me internally mm. because this is who I am. You know, someone once uh, came up to me and said, Ben, I want a shirt with your face on it. And I just wanted to say flatlands. And I was in my head, I, I knew that was a compliment, yeah. but it also made me feel a little uneasy. And I'm like, I actually, you know, I think I do view myself almost this way. And it's mm. just an unhealthy identity to put all of my worth and value. Well, and I would agree with that because obviously we talk a lot about identity development and how you are more than your career and you are more than your job and you're more than your occupation. You're for sure more than your GPA. You're for sure more than the points you score in a particular athletic competition. I mean, we tend to attach our identity probably is what you would describe in a fixed way to a variety of accomplishments or a mm -hmm. career or a title, flatlands barista and so forth. And what you were describing with the Stanford professor, that's a mm -hmm. fixed mindset. That's a fixed identity. Right. That's a fixed, but there's a second one. Right. Right. So the second one is a growth mindset. And this is a mindset that you'll make healthier decisions. Mm. We recognize that we are in control of our lives, that we can change 
where we're going. We can put forth effort intentionally, cognitively make these strategic decisions Mm -hmm. to get us where we actually want to go. I've been perhaps infamously quoted to say, the grass is not greener on the other side, which sounds perhaps pessimistic, but I would love to build upon that and and explain what I mean when I say that. Life is always hard. Mm -hmm. No matter who you talk to, if you go to the person next door that looks like they have everything or the person on Instagram that looks like they're making having a happy family and have that white picket fence, if you will, and are rolling in bank, maybe. Right. The thing is, everyone has challenges. Everyone does. So rather than looking down at the ground, seeing the grass color, I think the more important thing is looking up and knowing where your North Star is Mm -hmm. to help guide you. And the interesting thing that's happening right now, too, with COVID it's kind of forced us all to finally pause, reflect, and reassess where we're actually going, yes. which is why, I don't know if you know this, we're actually in a new uh, defined era right now that's already being termed the great resignation right now. Interesting. Right? They're calling it that. Cultural yes. sociologists <laughs> are calling it the great resignation, meaning? We're all quitting. (laughs) Yes. Trying new things. We've been interrupted. We've finally been interrupted to say, what is my meeting? Where what is my purpose? And where am I where is my North Star? Yeah. Which is which is the thing I'd rather be looking to rather than the grass being well in the North Star. I I use that imagery a lot. You've actually used the greener grass and the North Star, (laughs) both of which I like to think about a lot, Ben, because the North Star is all about perspective. And when we talk about the eight essentials to success. Here in DMB Coaching, we begin with perspective and we conclude with persistence. And then in between is a plan and proactivity and passion and so forth. But when people ask me what is the most important essential to success, it's always that first one. It's the perspective. Because without the dream, without the North Star, without that thing that you can see out of the corner of your eye, now you and I would agree you're not, even if you can see the North Star, we're never touching the North Star. We're never going to get to the North Star. We're never going to be able to arrive at the North Star, but at least it provides Mm -hmm. the trajectory and the direction. Mm -hmm. And it does, it gives us a vision and a dream. And then at the tail end of it, obviously, is persistence to continue to go. But persistence might mean I'm persisting Mm -hmm. to go after the North Star, but that may mean that I'm actually Mm -hmm. quitting things along the way, I'm guessing as I'm listening to you and learning from you, along the way to actually achieve that perspective. Um, and to get to that place that is more growth as opposed to fixed. Absolutely. That's exactly it. You want to know where you're going. And the cool thing is COVID has forced us to pause and reflect. And we should, I would argue, pause, reflect, analyze our own life, know where we're actually wanting to go. Now, do you feel like that's true for younger generations? Obviously you're 30 years old, but I was reading um, a little bit about Gen Z, you know, now affectionately called uh, Gen Zoomers, Generation Zoomers, who are now nine to 24 years old. And half of them at this point, they just started, but half of them are looking to quit their jobs and do something different. So part of me is wondering, is that because they have a grand vision or is it because they're fickle? And because they bounce from thing to thing and they can't keep their attention and they're looking and the research is telling us they're wanting more salary, they're wanting more opportunity, you know, but also I think that feels different to me. Like I want to tell some of those Gen Zers, like push a little farther versus someone who's maybe a little older, who's maybe kind of trudged through this things and they've had some experiences then going, you know, cause you're 30. So you're right. beyond that. And you're like, no, I've actually experienced some things and I'm ready to begin to pivot and so forth. So yeah. I'm just trying to wrap my head around when is quitting okay right. and when is quitting premature. Right. But there are two those two mindsets again. Mm-hmm. So I think it would be helpful to kind of boil it down. So under the fixed mindset that we talk about where you make unhealthy quitting decisions, right? Mm-hmm. You can choose to quit because it is seen as the easy way out. It is a, not consistent with who I am. I can't change. This isn't who I am. Or... It can actually work against you and prevent you from quitting because sunk cost fallacy is what, what it's called. So I've already committed to this. I've already mm-hmm. worked so hard. I've already put in you know three full years of college and worked so hard to get this 4.0 GPA, and I only had one more year left, and I'm you know mm-hmm. dropping out because I'm just already in too deep. Um, and that could work mm-hmm. on a surfacey level too. So 
<laughs> don't send us uh, any hate notes about this if anyone's listening here. Uh, in high school, I was with some friends and we bought tickets to see Transformers, an $8 ticket, right? 15 minutes in, half me and half the group left <laughs> because just wasn't resonating with me. I did not enjoy. I already could tell from the first 15 minutes. And most people would say, well, I spent that $8. And so I'm, I'm going to stay in this seat, mm-hmm. make it to the end because I've already put, you know, an investment in, in this, or I've already committed to this person. I'm dating this person. Mm. There we go. And now yeah. I'm stuck in this unhealthy relationship or I'm stuck in this work environment where I'm not appreciated mm. and I'm not respected but I, you know, I've already worked to get here. Yeah. So we, that's the, that's the fixed mindset. So then we talked a little bit about the growth mindset. Mm-hmm. And so let's apply those two things, like when to grit and when to quit under the fixed mindset or the, excuse me, the growth mindset, <laughs> I'm in control of my life. Mm-hmm. I still believe in what I'm doing and it's working. Like, let's keep going. I spent the time to pause, reassess and I'm still believing in what I'm doing and I'm seeing progress moving there. So I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to grit. And that is good. And that's when we use those phrases and that's when it's super healthy. Yeah. Never give up, just keep going. And then you also have the growth mindset and saying, I know where I want to go. I know my North star. I know my purpose. And I'm considering, can I get, give more value to myself, to others, to my family? If I, rethink where I'm headed and maybe you'll find yes. Maybe the answer is yes. Maybe you need to quit. Maybe you need to go to wherever you're working and say, this is my North star. Do you have, can I pivot even where I'm at? Right. 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 It could be that, but it's, it's taking charge instead of yes, unintentionally quitting or quitting for the easy way out. We quit intentionally. Mm. We persevere intentionally. It's the growth mindset where you make healthy grit and quit decisions. Well, Ben, you know, one of my favorite words in the English language is intentionality. Actually, my two favorite words in the English language are intentionality and undeservedly. Intentionality meaning we do things on purpose and undeservedly meaning that a lot of the things that we claim that we earned and that we have a right to are gifts. And so to really be in that kind of posture of gratitude. So I've really enjoyed our conversation. This has been fantastic. Do you have any final thoughts as you kind of wrap up our bite-sized podcast here in regards to, you know, reflections, words for our listeners as you obviously shared your story about quitting college. And I'm, I'm sure there's more to that story (laughs) and there's, you know, a lot there. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that might be a conversation we pick up on another podcast at another time, but Wrap us up a little bit. Give us some final things to think about as we're listening in and resonating with you. Absolutely. So I I actually weekly pause, reflect, and reassess. Mm. So I want to encourage anyone listening in to to actually do that, to spend the time when you talk about planning your week, also reflect, pause on the bigger grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself in different areas of your life, is it working and do I still believe in it? That's one. Two, Think about, are there areas in your life that you're allowing the fixed mindset to creep in? You know, what are habits that you're maybe pursuing blindly Hmm. or identities that you're are putting on yourself that are preventing you from cognitively thinking about where you're actually going, where your actual net worth is. So I want to encourage everyone to quit courageously, not cowardly. Mm-hmm. And I'm with you. Yeah. And I think that intentionality piece, particularly you said blindness mm-hmm. and versus with eyes open wide to really be fully alive and to be fully alert and to be fully reflective and to not just, you know, as we talk about a lot, Ben, that coasting mm-hmm. is always backwards. Mm-hmm. And so we don't want to just let life is so precious, right? And um, every day is sacred. And so why would we not? really want to reflect upon that North Star and and who we're becoming and make choices accordingly. And a lot of it could be choices that we start, mm-hmm. but there could also be mm-hmm. things, and we talked about this off camera. I mean, there's three choices we always make on any given point. We start, we stop, we sustain. Yeah. Start, stop, and sustain. There's probably some things that you need to start. Mm-hmm. There's definitely some things probably in both of our lives and the lives of our listeners and viewers that are going well and they need to sustain that. Mm-hmm. But I'm also guessing in light of our conversation today, 
there might be one or two things that we should stop. Yeah. Or, to use your words, quit. Because quitting is okay. For life coaching, consulting services, or to hire a keynote speaker, please visit dmbcoaching.com.